tomorrow. But the Taliban will be represented in those meetings as well? Yes, there will be a uh, rep uh, and correct. Is it is it correct that the secretary has not spoken to uh, Mullah Bharata uh, or any Taliban member? That is correct. So so he has his his representations about this have been confined to um, the Afghan government. When, in terms of the Afghan, Afghan people, they've it, been it's been to. It, it has included uh, the Afghan government. Of course, when we visited Kabul, we met with President Ghani, we met with yeah. Abdullah Abdullah. I, I, uh, it, it's I, I just want multiple to make sure conversations the last with President Ghani. The last Secretary of State, or the only Secretary of State to have spoken with the Taliban directly, is, was his predecessor. In the context of the conclusion of the U.S. Taliban agreement. Uh, uh, but, but let me make one other point. Of course, the Secretary has also been actively engaged uh, in speaking with countries. Uh, representatives, countries from uh, the region I, on this. I, uh, you're, you're trying to impute some kind of. I, I just want. I just want to know if it's okay. correct. I'm not saying yeah. that it's good or bad, whether he is or not. Can so, you, so do you happen what, to know? One, one more point. Um, just, just on this, to give you the and full I context. I just have one more, and it's extremely brief okay. because I think the answer is going to be no. Okay. So. Well, uh, Ambassador Khalilzad, in the context of all of this, um, will meet with each negotiating team separately, uh, okay. as we uh, frequently do to encourage them to engage productively uh, in this process, and importantly, not to squander this opportunity, uh, which may be um, uh, an historic opportunity to end what is not- Wait, to, squander this, oppor what opportunity? The, what, is, the, what are you talking the about? Opportunity, the opportunity. The opportunity that brought the, about by you guys withdrawing? The opportunity. Which has plunged the country, 65% of, of the country the into chaos? The opportunity of the Afghan government and the Taliban and the rest of the world, at least a large swath of the world, coming together. Uh, and let me remind you, it was, it's been less than a year since both the Afghan government and the Taliban have been willing to talk, have been engaged in intra-Afghan dialogue. So we have an opportunity, we had an oppor have had an opportunity in recent weeks and months that in many ways Afghanistan has not had uh, over the course of 40 years. We talk about the past three weeks of violence, the past three months of violence. This has been 40 years of conflict. Mm -hmm. And so with the Taliban and the Afghan government uh, now willing to talk to one another, um, of course, that is a, a necessary but, but insufficient step. Um, but what we are doing uh, is galvanizing the international community, supporting these intra-Afghan discussions uh, to attempt to make progress. Um, to do a couple things, to stop this military offensive, diminish the level of violence, and more broadly, to negotiate a political settlement to form an inclusive Afghan government uh, that ends this conflict. We remain confident in the fact that this is the only path to stability. We remain cognizant of the fact that this is the only path to stability and development uh, in Afghanistan. So uh, progress, has been slow, uh, it has been painfully slow, the violence uh, has been a cause for grave concern. We've been very clear about that. I think a lot of people would argue that there's not been any progress. It's not been slow, it's been non-existent. But anyway, did you ever get an, did you get an answer to the question I had yesterday about whether the Taliban was violating the terms of the February 2020 Doha agreement? Sure, let me add a, a bit of context there. There are several key parts of this February 2020 agreement. Um, uh, for, uh, to highlight. Number one, the Taliban will take specific actions to prevent any group or individual, including Al-Qaeda, from using Afghanistan to threaten the security of the United States and its allies. Uh, this, of course, incredibly important uh, to us. Uh, we have a commitment from the Taliban. We also have capabilities uh, in the region to see to it that this remains the case. Number two, the United States and coalition partners will withdraw foreign military forces from Afghanistan. This is uh, especially uh, noteworthy uh, in the context of our decision-making process. Uh, and uh, it's something that we obviously talked about at length yesterday. Number three, the Taliban and the Islamic Republic will launch intra-Afghan negotiations. It's a point I've just made that uh, this, uh, the two sides had not come together until uh, this agreement went into force. Uh, and they've been meeting now for less than a year. But the very fact that Abdullah Abdullah and Mullah Barada are in Qatar um, is, a, is, an, is a sign of that. And number four, a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire and agreement over the future political roadmap of Afghanistan will be part of the agenda 
of the intra-Afghan negotiations. And so this one, that's particularly relevant to your question on this. But the way we look at these four elements is that they are linked. They are interrelated. Intra-Afghan negotiations leading to a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire were an integral element of the agreement. Uh, and all recent indications, at least, suggest the Taliban are instead pursuing a battlefield victory. Um, yeah, but they didn't agree in February 2020 not to seek a, a battlefield victory against the Afghan government. What, what, what they did agreed they or to did do, they not? What, 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 what they agreed to do was yeah. to seek a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire agreement. Yeah, through these peace talks, which Correct. have gone nowhere. Correct. And, did and, they and, agree and, in, 2020, in February 2020, did they agree not to attack Afghan provisions, what, what major we can population say, centers, or the Afghan government? What, Afghan what we forces? can say, did they or what did we they can not? say is that. Uh, the level of, levels of violence are unacceptably high, and uh, what we have seen is inconsistent with the letter and the spirit of But the they agreement. didn't actually agree not to attack cities, uh, provincial capitals, uh, big po major population centers, or the Afghan, Matt, attacking, or, or the Afghan military. Attacking, attacking provincial capitals and targeting civilians is inconsistent with the spirit of the agreement. Mm. It's, it's this last clause of the agreement, the, the key point that I mentioned, a permanent and comprehensive ceasefire agreement over the future right. political roadmap of Afghanistan will be part of no. the agenda of the intra-Afghan negotiations. Yeah. Afghanistan. Uh,